Hi, and welcome back to 19th and 20th Century Philosophy. I'm Matt Brown, and today we're talking about Jane Addams and Emma Goldman, two key progressive era thinkers, both um, feminist philosophers, one, uh, Jane Addams, a pragmatist, the other, a radical, um, but both important uh, figures for, for um, progressive era political thought, especially related to um, feminism and wi women's issues. Jane Addams, born uh, 1860, um, just uh, on the eve of the outbreak of the Civil War. Emma Goldman, born a little bit later, 1869. Um, uh, Adams died in 1935. Goldman died in 1940. So their timelines are pretty, pretty close together. Um, and uh, today, I want to I want to talk about each of these figures in turn, but also talk a little bit about um, a little bit about the overlaps and uh, similarities, dissimilarities as well um, between their ideas. First, let's talk about Jane Addams. Now, Jane Addams was uh, uh, the daughter of a, a fairly wealthy Midwestern family. Um, she was uh, as many. Uh, women at that time were uh, uh, college educated. She received a, a, a college education at, a, at a, one of the new women's colleges. Um, but she fell in that sort of area where although women could get educated, there were not uh, many uh, career options open to them. Um, Adams described this as uh, the snare of preparation, right? On the one hand, they were sort of prepared um, by their education for careers that then didn't exist, right? So um, uh, Adams did what many women of her generation did uh, after college. She took a kind of grand tour of Europe, but rather than um, uh, hitting kind of the sightseeing uh, uh, sort of things, she spent a lot of time in the poorest sec sectors of the city she traveled in, um, including a memorable trip to London to an institution uh, known as Toynbee Hall, uh, or sometimes just called the Settlement, um, where um, mainly college students uh, from Oxford and Cambridge lived um, and uh, did service work in the in the neighborhood of London, in this poor neighborhood of London. Um, Jane Addams saw this as a potential model for herself. So when she went home. Instead of, uh, instead of going home to courtship and marriage, uh, as she was expected, uh, uh, Adams, along with her friend Ellen Gates Starr, um, formed uh, Hull House in one of the poor, um, largely immigrant neighborhoods of Chicago. Um, now, um, Hull House was, a, was an institution set up from the beginning uh, to do social work in the neighborhood. Um, again, it was called a social settlement, um, uh, and social settlements were, were popping up in major cities in the U.S. as a, as a mode of um, uh, providing services, um, social services. Many of, the, many of the types of social service organizations that existed at that time were driven by, um, you know, charitable uh, uh, organizations, theories of social science, or or um, religious ideas um, that would sort of impose um, moral conditions uh, and, and impose ideas of what the right thing for these people wo uh, were, and and at first Hull House was no different, but very quickly Adams um, uh, adopted an approach that was um, less driven by her own ideas and more driven by uh, the needs of the people in the neighborhood. So what Adams ended up doing was um, uh, changing her plans and really listening to and involving cooperatively people in the neighborhood um, uh, uh, in order to, to determine what Hull House's plans would be. Um, Adams um, is uh, um, an important figure in the lineage of pragmatist philosophy um, of the school of pragmatism. She's a she's an important sort of member of the second generation of thinkers, um, 
Uh, and her connection with pragmatism comes primarily through her close working relationship with another second generation figure, John Dewey, um, who she both uh, worked with and also she inspired a lot of his, his uh, developments. Um, in her work, I mean, you can kind of see the pragmatism already in the flexible sort of problem-driven approach of Hull House. Um, you see it also in, a, in an approach that she, uh, that's sometimes called the sympathetic knowledge or sympathetic interpretation method, right? Where she addresses um, uh, sort of human and social problems through the sort of attempt to craft narratives that help us understand the experiences of, of, of people on the ground, right? Um, give us a sympathetic point of view on their lives um, and uh, use that to drive social change rather than having social change being driven kind of top down. Um, in Democracy and Social Ethics, she um, uh, emphasizes this kind of method, um, uh, this sort of she uses the word perplexities in a number of places to refer to the kind of um, the kind of sort of felt or experienced problems that drive uh, social inquiry. Um, she also rests a lot of the argument on this important distinction between individual ethics and social ethics, right? So individual ethics sort of emphasizes personal morality, moral codes or rules, um, sort of. Uh, liberal rights, um, whereas social ethics emphasizes interdependence, um, uh, the way in which we depend on each other, as well as um, cooperation. And, you know, as you can probably tell from the thesis of the book, democracy and social ethics are closely connected, um, if, not a, if not the same sort of thing. So she doesn't think about democracy as just a kind of um, convenient form of government right, a, a way of, of uh, connecting the people to their government. She actually thinks of democracy as primarily an ethical um, uh, thing, uh, primarily about people cooperating with one another. So that's, um, that's Adams. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, Emma Goldman. Goldman was um, born in Russia, as I said, in 1869 uh, to a Jewish family. They immigrated to the United States uh, when she was still a teenager, um, and she spent much of her life uh, living and working in the United States. Um, um, she was an activist, a writer, uh, also a, a lecturer. She gave many um, lectures and speeches, uh, sometimes to large crowds. Um, Goldman was uh, an anarchist um, thinker. Uh, she was a, a, a proponent of women's rights, um, and uh, as as many anarchists were at the time, she was um, uh, in and out of, of jail on many occasions, uh, prison on many occasions. She um, sometimes because she uh, was involved uh, in planning violent acts, other times because um, uh, the uh, American government of this time period was repressive against ideas that were considered um, uh, treasonous, right, or seditious, right? So, so anarchists, socialists, communists were often jailed just because their ideas were considered ag uh, be, as being ag ag against the government, right? Um, something that today would be a little bit harder to get away with, perhaps, um, but was was common, especially during World War I. Um, Goldman, although she defended women's rights, you, you'll notice she is not in favor of, uh, women, of women's suffrage, of the main sort of feminist uh, uh, project of the time period of trying to secure the right to vote for women. Not because uh, she thought, you know, men should vote and women shouldn't, but because she was a, I mean, she was a true anarchist. She was so against the state um, that, uh, you know, opening up voting to other people just seems irrelevant to her. You know, so she has a concept of anarchism that, on the one hand, is is driven by a kind of unrestricted notion of in, of liberty, of individual liberty, um, and uh, the sort of equation of any form of government with um, violence, right? With with uh, so so 
Um, we shouldn't have the state because the state is violence, right? Its actions are necessarily violently coercive, right? Um, not that uh, not that Goldman necessarily disagrees with Adams about the interdependence of people, right? Um, she's the she's the type of anarchist who's totally um, uh, who's totally uh, comfortable with the notion that people are independent and collective action is the way we're going to solve social problems. Um, it's just that she has this notion of the state as um, sort of separate from and coercive of the people. Um, Adams has a somewhat more, you could call it, pragmatic attitude about the, the state, but also, you know, she has this deep commitment to democracy, um, which uh, again sees democracy more as, more as a way of life than a form of government, right? An idea she, um, she shares with, uh, possibly co-developed with um, John Dewey, um, uh, who has a lifelong commitment to democracy as well. Um, and it's an interesting, I think, um, you know, to look at these two pers perspectives in contrast on, on, on uh, democratic institutions, the nature of democracy. So that's Adams and Goldman, a little bit of an introduction. Um, I look forward to hearing uh, further thoughts as we discuss the selections on, from Adams, Democracy and Social Ethics, uh, the, the introduction and the discussion of um, household life, right? And uh, as well as the selections from Emma Goldman's Anarchism and Other Essays, uh, where we get her, her theory of anarchism as well as her, um, her account of marriage and, and love in an anarchist context. Um, so uh, please let me know what you think on Discord uh, or um, in class today uh, or here on the comments of this video. Um, and uh, uh, otherwise, um, I'll see you next time. I'm thinking about inviting a colleague of mine, um, Dr. Starneman, who studies progressive era um, women activists uh, and writers, um, uh, sort of radical thinkers, um, and is particularly interested in both Adams and Goldman. So I'm thinking about inviting her to do a little interview here. Um, let me know if you think that would be interesting. Okay, see you, see you next week.